For the project that I selected, I did the Guardian's project, the NSA files decoded. Um, and this was a really cool project. It came out after all the news about Snowden's leaks had broken. And it basically was breaking down less of the breaking news and more of the hard facts of, like it says, what the uh, NSA files kind of meant for someone. So I'm going to let like the first part when you scroll down play. To say, I want the world the way it used to be, but with an iPhone. And we're never going to get that. Instead, you have to struggle with the question, how do you account for the fact that this information is going to be everywhere about us. Anyone that's concerned with privacy is left with only one option, and that's simply not to trust any product or service that has physical ties to the United States. Okay, so obviously that opening is super cool. One of the things that I loved about it is the little treatment that they gave but with to all here, yeah, that to all of the video, um, they kind of set up who the major players in their piece are and had the details of like where they interviewed them, how long the interview was, who the person was. And I thought that this was really cool because they basically set up the fact that this is going to be an immersive experience. It's not just going to be like an article that you read from top to bottom. It's kind of something that you dig into and you can kind of play around with at your own leisure. Um, another part of that, just looking at it, is the fact that they have this like table of contents, basically. You hover over it, it tells you what you can look at. So you can go through and you can really easily kind of like skip through this to different parts. So as we keep going down, they so have the Constitution. They have autoplay on all of these, but they basically introduce, you know, you've got your kind of standard setup, but even this is like they're giving treatment to everything to make sure that you're really like keyed into what they're telling you and they're breaking all of this up with different things so even when it's just like an interview with someone who's important to the story you know you come down and it's just auto playing and this person's already talking to you basically so we have a constitution and it provides that the American so as you get further kind of this is the setup at the beginning and then you come to the next piece. And basically what they did was that like you could never scroll, you could barely ever have a situation on this like a 15 inch MacBook that I'm recording this on. Like you could never have a time when you didn't have a digital element in your eye. Like this one ends, that one begins. And they're basically just breaking things down. They're taking things and creating easy guides. Um, you know, this is not that complicated of something to create. It's, I mean, it's difficult to like code, but it's not that like complicated of an idea, but it's just something nice where it's like, who are these people? You know, who are each of these people and what was their role at different times? It's kind of like a take on a timeline, but instead just like a lineup of the people involved and kind of showing you all the different important players in this. As you keep going, they have more of these auto played things. And then again, to another cool digital element. So here, you know, they're doing all of the hard reporting and all of the great, like, writing here. Um, and any time that you wanted to tweet anything, that's another cool thing, is, like, you just double-click it. And it takes those words out here to Twitter. So I could tweet this immediately, a link to it, which is pretty cool as well. So everything's made to be interactive. Get down to this digital element, and what is it going to do? You know, in this paragraph up here, it's talking about Facebook and how if you have like a typical, like the typical amount of friends you can have. So then they're like, okay, we're going to take you to a graphic that shows you, okay, if you have, like let's say I have like way too many friends on Facebook because I was that weird middle schooler who friended like everyone and their mother. But like let's say that like I have like 900 friends on Facebook. So let's say that you have like 910 friends. So it tells you how many first degree friends you have and then it shows like all the connections that Facebook can allow like it you can literally just like log into Facebook here and have your amount of friends come in and it shows you the sliding scale and put things in perspective and very like easy to consume graphics which is really cool it's just a little like piece of interaction breaking up the text again you can't scroll through without getting to another cool digital element here it's basically just counting it's very simple little algorithm where it's counting how many seconds you've been here and then multiplying that by how many terabytes per second the NSA would have selected in that time 
But then they do something cool here where they don't just let it like, this seems like an impressive number, but like honestly, most people don't know what a terabyte is. So it explains like it in two hour HD movies, which is something that anyone can understand. So like the point is that anyone can consume this and they're using the digital elements to put things into very real terms for people. It's this many two hour HD movies. You're looking at, you know, okay, the capacity of a Boeing 747, the capacity of Topeka, you know, like that kind of thing. As you keep going, these... I believe we're actually having the debate. Autoplay things are really nice because it kind of like forces you to listen to these people. And these interviews, they were long interviews, obviously, but the, the little clips You can say, well, show me proof that uh, this... ...are really powerful. And they break up their sections really nicely as well. I always love this design, just every part kind of having some motion to it, nothing really feeling stagnant. Um, it doesn't feel like a print paper put onto the web. It feels more like a living, breathing thing. Here's another really simple thing. I think this should be part of journalism more. They bring the court order, like the, the court order, the document, and they just put it online where you can read it. Like, I think this would be so helpful for people who have questions because you can't just sit here and read through it if you're interested. Um, and here's another example where, again, they are showing you in real terms, like, what your digital trail looks like. And they're kind of breaking that down for you and letting you, you know, like, okay, I do this and I do this, like, you know. How much personal information am I sharing? Like, if you do all of these things, and it kind of like lets you see that. And again, there's the motion. This could all be stagnant if they wanted it to, but they let it move a little bit so that your eyes kind of stay fixated on it. So as we move through, there's a lot of nice pieces in here. I personally believe that one of the most important things is just having these documents in here where you can kind of read them. I think that's really interesting. Um, this is another cool thing where they're showing the fiber optic cables. They show how many people are connected, you know, what country is connected to what, down to, um, to you know, tiny little countries that aren't connected at all, really up to, you know, countries like the U.S. and the U.K. So, Overall, they do a really good job, I think, of just taking an, a really difficult topic, because the NSA files obviously were really complicated, but they take it and package it in such a aesthetic way. I mean, everything is very nicely laid out. There's a lot of white space. You don't feel like you're consuming a lot of text at a time because they bring these interviews into the picture. And then they're breaking it up and they're showing you, you know, there's so much to explain here, like, you know, I'm just dropping down to the middle of this right now, and you read this, and you're like, Snowden endorses a combination of Tor and PGP. Like, the average person is not going to sit here and be like, oh, I know what that is. So they show you immediately. They introduce the topic, and then immediately they're like, okay, here's what it is, and they give you a simple explanation. This, again, it seems like it's not necessary. You don't really need to have this graphic. There's no actual physical need to have it moving, but because it is moving, it's more interesting more engaging it kind of just like helps the reader look at it and be like yeah this looks nice I like this so moving down again always these interviews they really like to allow the people to be just speaking for themselves which I think is important people have been prosecuting the United States so then we get down further and they show all the different here this is really awesome because this shows all of the different laws American laws connected to different things. So like if you're concerned about phone records, you know, here's what does this. Um, and so it basically breaks down different, you know, different laws, different executive orders, etc. so that you can kind of learn about, okay, like what law refers to this, what law refers to that. Mm -hmm this, you know, it just kind of is interesting and engaging and allows a lot of information, honestly, to be packaged into a small space. Um, and again, you've got full documents here. They're finding ways to package these documents where if someone wants it, they can go read it. 
It doesn't necessarily have to be here, but there's so many documents, so many court documents here that you can just read at public, you know, at the public's fingertips. And finally, you get down here and you're looking at different. This is judges, FISA court, and it's kind of taking you through, okay, like, this is what these people look like. This is the makeup of these people, and it's allowing you to see who each of these people are and what their demographics are, which is awesome. They're showing you when they were appointed. Um, so each of these pieces of information, you know, it kind of, it moves easily. Again, this is a lot of text that's being packaged really nicely because it's continually being broken up. And it's being broken up by important things. It's not being broken up by They're dumb very... pictures or something like that. It's being broken up by interviews, which allow for the interview subjects to speak for themselves and to not be taken out of context. And it also is allowing for a wide variety of graphics and informative pieces of information that add to um, the overall experience of trying to learn and get your head around the NSA files. And they also have extended interviews with everyone down here. So I personally think this is one of the best um, examples of this type of kind of online digital storytelling. It's long form. It takes, I the remember when I first went through it, it took me like two hours, I think, to consume all of it, like in one sitting. Um, but it's super informative, and it really does allow you to say, okay, I want to learn about this and sit down and learn everything. And I personally thought it was interesting because it's about the NSA files, but it was done by a British publication. Um, that's how important American politics are, I guess, to the world, is that a British publication spent this much time breaking down an American issue. Um, but overall, I think... What can really be taken away from this is the, the use of digital storytelling to be, you know, kind of the, the core of this piece. The, the text was obviously extremely important, and it's really beautifully written, uh, really beautifully written copy. It's but the Constitution. at the end of the day, and it of the day oops, that the American people... At the end of the day, I think what's important here is that every time that the reader might have a question, that question is answered by... The digital aspect of it and are, uh, the autoplay makes it a little annoying to scroll through but overall i think that the use of video and the use of visual elements really allows this to be a more cohesively told story and it tells the story better than print could have and it tells the story better than just one long article could have it really is a full and complete story so that's why i picked apart this one and i personally believe that this is one of the top five online digital pieces of storytelling ever and i think it really could be used to teach any type of digital storytelling. So that is what I believe is most important about this, and I think it's really interesting and could be looked at for hours. So I hope you guys enjoyed it as well.